Today, I want to tell you about a man who was a clever politician. His name was Absalom, and he was a son of the great King David, the son of Jesse. I'm going to read to you from 2 Samuel chapter 15, starting at verse 4, where we read this. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me, then I would give him justice. And it was so that when any one came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Absalom was the son of King David, and he seemed to be in line for the throne. But it didn't come fast enough for Absalom. He saw his best years passing by, and David was still alive. Bitter because of David's unwise parenting, inspired by raw ambition, and energized by brilliant political instincts, Absalom began to overthrow the reign of King David. First, he hired an entourage, a posse, if you will. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 says that he had chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Absalom did not want the chariot for speed, but to make an impressive procession. This was Absalom the politician sensing what the people wanted and knowing how to provide them with an image to respond to. Then Absalom subtly undermined King David at the courts of law. When anyone came to David's court, Absalom got to them first, and he said, Your case is good and right, but there's no deputy of the king to hear you. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. You see, Absalom stirred up dissatisfaction with David's government, and he campaigned against David by promising to provide justice that was supposedly denied to the people. But Absalom was energized more by political instincts than by a real quest for justice. Our text tells us, whenever anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. See, Absalom had great people skills. He wouldn't let others bow down to him, but he would lift them up, shake their hand, and embrace them. In ancient Israel, they were too easily impressed by image and too slow to see or appreciate the reality behind the image. Now, since then, we're only more impressed by image over reality. Nevertheless, in the days of ancient Israel, Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. His clever campaign worked. He became more popular and more trusted than even his father, David. Looking at the whole picture in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1-6, through 6, Absalom knew exactly how to do this. He cultivated an exciting, enticing image with the chariots and entourage. He worked hard, rising early. He knew where to position himself. He looked for troubled people. He reached out to troubled people. He took a personal interest in the troubled person. He sympathized with the person. He never attacked David directly, but he left the troubled person even more troubled than they were before. And he promised to do better than David without directly attacking him. Now, Absalom's clever approach made him able to weaken and divide David's kingdom without saying any specific thing that could condemn him. In fact, Absalom could do all of these things and say, I'm just helping David to deal with all the discontent. Well, in fact, Absalom was promoting discontent. Now, check this out. David was Israel's greatest king, and Israel became dissatisfied with him, and they let a wicked, amoral man steal their hearts. Now, how could it happen? Well, it happened because David was getting older. It happened because David's sins diminished his standing. 
It happened because sometimes people like change and Absalom was exciting. It happened because Absalom was very skilled and clever. It happened because David had to enter into the fellowship of his sufferings and he had to be rejected like the son of David, Jesus Christ, would later be rejected. Friends, if David, the greatest king of Israel, except, of course, for the Messiah, Jesus Christ himself, if he should suffer so, then we should never despise how God might use suffering in our life. I don't know if you have a clever opponent in your life, like Absalom was a clever opponent of David. But realize that even if you have a clever, conniving opponent, your life, your destiny is still in God's hand. God was still in control of this whole situation, even though it was going to cause David a lot of pain. God was still working through things and would advance his kingdom. He'll do the same thing in your life. You can trust him about it today.